In this video, we'll talk about the shoulder and the pain surrounding the shoulder joint. Now let's draw a joint, shoulder joint. This is scapula, sternum, and clavicle. And assume that the patient or two patients come with anterior pain. Now the first one will tell you I have the pain diffusely in the anterior side, while the second one will tell you it's more localized and it extends over the humerus. The first one will tell you, well, it's with all range of motion, I feel the pain. Well, the second patient will mention that the pain is mainly against the gravity. When they carry something or when they go to the mall, for example, and carry shopping bags. Now, the first patient will mention that this has been there for months to years, while the second patient will mention that it has been there for few weeks to months maximum. Now, the first patient have arthritis of the glenohumeral joint, while the second patient has bicipital tendinitis. Remember, the biceps extends over the anterior part of the humerus before insertion in the tubercle there. That's why they have tenderness over the humerus, which is an important physical finding you can see in the patients when they present with this disease. Now, let's talk about anterior lateral pain. So if the patient comes and say that, well, I have this pain in the anterior part of the shoulder, a little bit in the lateral side, and this pain is mainly when they're trying to reach over the head or when they sleep on that side. Now, you want to examine them, and one of the main maneuvers that you want to do in these patients is ask them to do the empty can sign, where you ask the patient to make the good sign, like the like button sign, extension of the arm with the thumbs up and ask them to flip their finger down to change the good sign to not good sign basically and if it's positive then you have to think this patient might have rotator cuff tendinitis now what if in addition to these findings the patient has rotator cuff weakness which is mainly on the lateral rotation of the shoulder then we are talking about rotator cuff Tear. So that's the distinction between a tear and a tendinitis. Tendinitis only pain, while rotator cuff tear is pain plus weakness. Now, so far we have talked about the three patients and three types of pain. Now, if these patients don't seek treatment and they chronically have immobilization of their um, joints slash tendons, in addition to having some risk factors like diabetes, then they might develop stiffness chronically and that's what we call frozen shoulder or more fancy name adhesive capsulitis. Now it's important to educate the patient that this is a reversible process if they follow some exercises and uh, you can refer them to physical therapy or occupational therapy to help with that. If that fails, we can try steroid injections to help with the symptoms. And the last cause for shoulder joint pain I'm going to mention is to keep it always in your mind is going to be the nerve pain secondary to impingement from the cervical area. Now, this, these patients can have nerve-like pain, obviously. They may describe it as well as diffuse anterior shoulder joint pain, which looks like shoulder arthritis as well. So make sure you look for the risk factors and which disease can be associated with each of them. Hope you guys learned something from this video and see you in the next one.